Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. It's teardown time today. On the bench I've got this Marantz NR1506. I bought this probably in about 2017. This was back in the day when you could actually get things in from Amazon Germany without having to pay GST on it. So I think this ended up costing me about $350 or so. I basically could have bought two of these from Amazon Germany for the price that they were being sold in Australia. Sadly, those days are now long gone, but anyway, here we are. So I purchased this surround sound receiver to replace my old faithful Rotel RSP985 that had died on me. And my interest had changed. When I started out in audio, I was interested primarily in home theatre. But my interests have now moved to, to hi-fi, to stereo music listening. And as you know, if you've watched my channel, I have dedicated systems for that. So I wasn't going to spend a huge amount of money on a surround sound receiver. I certainly didn't want to pay for a heap of features that I was not going to use. So 7.1, 9.1, not interested. You know, something with thousands of watts a channel, not interested. So this thing is... It's actually a 5.2 receiver. It's got two subwoofer outputs, as you'll see. It has 50 watts of power per channel, so that's five channels times 50. The front panel's not very exciting, all the normal kind of stuff that you'd normally see. So let's just turn it around and have a look at the rear panel. The other thing I like about this is that it's, it's really slimline. You can see how slim that is in terms of height. So it fits really nicely, but as I say, you still get 50 watts of power per channel. So if we have a look at the rear panel, well obviously there's your speaker outputs there, HDMI inputs, all your usual things. This is a nice feature, it does support 4K. I don't actually have any 4K sources, but I have just got myself recently a 4K television. So it's nice to know that when I get some 4K sources, this will be able to switch those. Uh, all your Wi-Fi antennas there, two Wi-Fi antennas, so it collect, connects to your home Wi-Fi network. Oh, it's got Ethernet as well, which I've never plugged that in. So it can do software updates. You can remote control it using an iPad. There's some Marantz software that you can install on your iPad, and it will allow you to do uh, full remote control. So all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but when we look over here, there are some of the features that are, are really, really handy. And that is this, these pre-outs. So I mentioned that it's 5.2, so it's got two subwoofer outputs. But the fronts, the right and the left fronts, there are line level outputs for those as well. So instead of using the 50 watt amplifier inside of this thing to drive the fronts, you can have a separate power amp and drive the fronts with that. And that's what I do. I have, at the moment, my Sinef Type S amplifier is driving my Rogers Compact Monitors is what I have presently. And it is really, really nice to have that flexibility. A couple of other things, uh, digital audio ins, which I've never used, it says are assignable. So I guess you can say that you want this one to go with HDMI 3, I guess. Uh, audio ins, which I've never used that. Antennas in, I've never used that. Remote control, I've never used that. So anyway, that's pretty much all there is to see on the back. So let's get the lid off this thing and see what there is inside. Here we are. So I guess unsurprisingly there is a fair bit inside of here for such a compact unit. So obviously here is our main transformer here. It's a little bit of dust. I'll give this thing a bit of a dust before I put the lid back on. There is our power supply. Just see if I can see what brand any of these capacitors are. 
Now I can't see any brands on that. I can't actually see whether this is actually a Marantz power supply or not. It's not uncommon to use a third party power supply for these kind of devices. It does say it's a switch mode power supply. So they do tend to be more inherently noisy, but again, that's really not too surprising in a device like this. Obviously these are our main filter capacitors, 6800 mic. Sam Young, a brand I've never heard of, but I would suggest that Nichicon it ain't. Okay, yeah, I see. So they're most of the caps are Sam Young. This funny little logo here that I've never seen before is obviously the Sam Young logo. There's these caps over here are the same brand. These ones down here are the same brand. So they're all Sam Young. Incidentally, this thing's made in Vietnam. Which I don't have any problems with. Okay, so what I'm most interested in is down there. So obviously these are all of the transistors that make the noise. And yeah, so they're actually electrically connected to this circuit board here. Can you see what I can see? This circuit board has got a wave in it. Just the way that it's mounted. See that? There's a great big wave along the length of that circuit board. Oh well, there you go. Oops. So yeah, this is your drive board and they're mounted to there and they're like, the legs have been in a U and then they're mounted to this heatsink. So this is all your power heatsink here. So this bottom board down here, I'd say is some sort of an analog board because um, your speaker outs are on that and it looks like the line ins are as well. And then this here is your digital board, which is not too surprising. You can see along here are all your HDMI inputs. And if we have a look at some of these main chipsets, we've got Panasonic, Panasonic, analog devices, analog devices, shark devices, some sort. So this is probably your main processor here. Great big quad flat back. I'm a little bit surprised that it's not a BGA kind of a device, but They've obviously managed to get it all to work in that device there. Got a Max device over here. Oh, an Altera. Yeah, it's an Altera device. So an FPGA over there. This will be this will be some sort of a power supply up here. Got these little surface mount inductors. And this here will be the wireless module, I would suggest. Yeah, so that's your antennas connecting to this wireless module underneath that bit of black tape. And you've got your ethernet there. So I think that's probably about all there is to see really in this device. But, you know, there's nothing too especially surprising. I mean, I think overall the build quality is actually, you know, pretty nice. I mean, it clearly isn't an audiophile device. I've never claimed that it is. Um, but it, it did review fairly well when I bought it. As I said, I didn't want to spend a heap of money for features that I knew I wasn't going to use or need. But I actually do use this to listen to music a bit as well, just using the internal DACs, or it might be actually through this digital stuff. It may not even have standalone DACs. I can't see one. So I'm thinking it probably just processes all the, the DAC kind of stuff. But I do listen to Hi-Fi with this, and it sounds pretty good to me. I don't really have any complaints as to the quality of the, the stereo music that comes out of this when I route it to my separate amp and my speakers. So I'm reasonably happy with that. It's clearly been built to a budget, as you can see with these you know, cheaper electrolytic capacitors and so on. But for what I paid for it and what's in it, I think it's pretty amazing. So, so no complaints about that. I mean, it is a Marantz. It's not some 
you know, absolute piece of junk. So yeah, I just thought it would be interesting to pop the hood and see what's inside of here. I'll give it a little bit of a dust using my um, anti-static dust brush before I put the lid on and get her back into commission. But I hope you did enjoy this little teardown with me. Please subscribe to my channel. It means so much to me. You can support my work at Patreon, patreon.com forward slash audio nautica. Check out my other channel, Watch Out, which is my watchmaking channel. And I really look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye for now.